Welcome back to Primer's Classroom, guys. In this class, we want to talk about empirical and molecular formula. In the last class, I talked about relative molecular mass and how to calculate percentage composition. In this class, I'm going to take empirical formula slowly. I'm going to solve one question with you, and I will give you one question to solve after, based on the same principle that I've used to solve it. Now, um, please, pardon me. In the last class, I made one terrible mistake. And thank God for Fidao's mom, one of my previous students' mom. She's also a chemistry tutor. She called my attention to it. I was using grandpa mo as the unit for relative molecular mass. Please, anything relative has no unit. Relative density has no unit. Relative molecular mass has no unit. Relative atomic mass has no unit. But molar mass, you remember, and your number of moles is equal to mass over molar mass. So if you're looking for molar mass, it's going to be mass over number of mole, and that's going to be gram per mole. Molar mass has units, but not relative molecular mass. So please, in my first class, if you have watched the first class, do not add units after you have calculated the entire relative molecular masses. So thank you, um, Fidao's mom. God bless you, ma. So... And that's one of the things we all want to learn. And I'm so eager to teach. I'm so eager to bring these things to you guys. Teach you the simplest ways to understand this. The day I did that video was in the night. And that shows you that anybody can make mistakes. So I did it in the night and I was so tired. But I was just solving. Let me quickly do this thing. Because I promised some of you I was going to make the video. So if you notice any error, nobody's above mistakes. So if you notice any error, please let me know. Probably you're a student, you're a teacher watching the video. We are all learning one way or the other. But everything I'm going to teach you is documentary. I promise you it will give you ease to why you can solve questions. So let's move on to empirical and molecular formula that have been solved. Empirical formula is the formula that shows the simplest ratio of the number of atoms that are present in a given compound. Why molecular formula shows the actual, the true, the exact ratio of the atoms that are present in a molecule. So now, if I have glucose, for example, what is the formula for glucose? C6, H12, O6. Do you think I can still simplify this? This is the formula for glucose, and this is called the molecular formula for glucose. But now, I can simplify this formula. That means I can say 6 divided by 6, that's going to give me 1. 12 divided by 6, that's going to give me 2. So the simplest form of this, I can take this, is use it to divide through. Then that means this can still give me C, because 6 divided by 6 is 1. 12 divided by 6, that's H2. 6 divided by 6 is also 1. So now, this is the simplest form of this compound. I can't simplify it more than this. So this is called empirical formula. Why this is the molecular formula. Do you understand that? So the compound that shows the simplest ratio is the empirical formula. Why the compound that shows the actual ratio is the molecular formula. So this is also called simplest formula. Why this one is also called the true or the exact formula. For example, again, let's take benzene. What's the formula for benzene? Very good. That's C6. H6. Now, can I simplify this formula? Absolutely. Yes. I can have, I can divide by 6. So 6 divided by 6, that's 1 carbon. 6, then that's H. So this is the empirical formula for benzene, and this is the molecular formula for benzene. So that is what empirical molecular formula is actually talking about. But there are some calculations we do to get all of these things. So let's move into the calculations. Now, we'll teach you the rules. There are just three basic rules you need to solve questions on empirical formula. So, what are the things you need when you are solving this question? So, the rules to solve empirical formula. So, number one, just three basic rules. Number one, they are going to give you the mass or the percentage composition. So, you should write that down. So they will give you the mass or the percentage composition. That's number one. I'm going to take an example with you. So you see how we use this formula. Number two, 
they will give you now they will give you atomic masses so this mass and percentage comp or percentage composition given we are going to divide that's root two divide by each atomic masses so whatever atomic mass they give you for the particular element you divide either the mass or percentage one thing you should notice that the percentage can be given as whatever if the percentage sum up to 100 then that's still talking about the mass so 100 gram of a compound is still saying 100 percent of the compound so we're going to have that then after dividing by each atomic mass then the rule three is that so you're going to keep this rule and you are going to follow it one after the other when we start solving questions so rule three is that you're going to divide by the simplest ratio that's even if you have not gotten your ratio already simplest ratio so you take that molecule and you divide by the simplest ratio so let's pick a question looking at now looking at this i said solve the question based on class one so we did class one by now you should be able to solve these questions and try your best that number one to three leave your answer in the comment section if there's anything you're not getting right I will solve it for you in the next class. So, number one question says that an hydrocarbon is analyzed to contain 2.4 gram of carbon and 0.6 gram of hydrogen. What is the empirical formula of the compound? What did I say empirical formula used to indicate? Very good, the simplest ratio. So now, they want us to calculate the empirical formula of this compound. Now, note this question. Anytime you hear the word hydrocarbon, hydrocarbon means that you have just carbon and hydrogen hydrogen and carbon that's what the word hydrocarbon means so let's look at how we're going to solve this question now what are you given you're given mass 2.4 gram of carbon and 0.6 gram of hydrogen so keep this rule in mind so let's look at how we're going to solve it so first is i said number one they will give you the mass so you are going to write the element carbon and hydrogen because the compound says hydrocarbon so those are the two elements now the mass of carbon given is 2.4 while the mass of hydrogen given is 0 0.6 so that's rule number one rule number two is that you should divide it by the atomic masses the atomic mass of carbon is 12 that of hydrogen is 1 2.4 divided by 12 is my beautiful calculator so 2.4 divided by 12 that gives us 0 0.2. That's rule number two. So divide by the atomic mass, then you get 0 0.2. Then 0 0.6, that will give you that. So now, what's rule number three? Very good. Divide by the smallest. So which one is the smallest here now? 0 0.2. So you now divide through. Divide this one by 0 0.2. Divide this by 0 0.2. So if you divide it by 0 0.2, you should get one. If you divide this, you should get three. So 0 0.6 divided by 0 0.2 gives you 3. So that means that the empirical formula of this compound is CH3. Now, I don't think, aside methyl, so this compound should not exist on its own. That means this is going to be a simple ratio for a particular compound. Don't worry about that if you don't understand what I'm saying yet. So you solve number 2 for me. You have to calculate the empirical formula. Just follow the step based on what I've done. So the next thing to note is that now you understood what we have done so far. Keep rule number one, two, and three in your mind. Solve that question that follow. Another thing you need to know is that sometimes they will give you percentage composition. But that percentage composition they give you, when you sum all together, it should be 100%. If it is not 100%, mostly it is usually oxygen that is left. Sometimes it can be another element, but it is usually oxygen. So let's check a question out that is talking about that. Another thing is that after dividing by the smallest ratio, note number one from what I just said, if you're given percentage composition and you add all of them together and it is not up to 100, then the total must be, you must subtract the total from 100. Whatever is left is for oxygen. Or whatever is left is for another element that has been described in the question so get that i will solve an example so you understand what i'm saying another thing is that after you use rule number three 
and you did not get a whole ratio, what you are going to do is that you are going to multiply the final answers by integers. 2, 3, 4, 5, until you get a perfect ratio. That's number. So that's what this next example is all about. So now you are given an empirical formula of an oxide containing 72.0% manganese by mass. Now, you are given percentage of manganese, but you remember the question says of an oxide. What do you think that manganese must have combined with? Very good, oxygen. So that means that that compound contains manganese and oxygen. But you are given the percentage of manganese. You are not given that of oxygen. That means that you know the percentage of oxygen now. So percentage of oxygen is going to be total percentage, which should be 100 minus percentage of manganese. So whenever they give you percentage and it is not up to 100%, whatever is left must have been for oxygen. So now that will be 100 minus 72. So that's 28%. So the percentage of oxygen in the compound is 28. So how do we now So what's rule number one? Now we have their percentage composition. Percentage of manganese given is 72. Percentage of oxygen is 28. So what do we do first? Write the, the atom separate. Abby, what's the percentage of manganese given? 72. That of oxygen, 28. So what did I say you would do? Divide by the atomic masses. The atomic mass of manganese is 55. That of oxygen is 16. So when you say 72 divided, so 72 divided by 55, that's going to give me 1.309 1 28 divided by 16 equals 1.75. So since this is 1.75, let me leave this to three decimal places as well. 1.31. So let's divide by the simplest ratio so this will be 1.31 divided and this will be 1.31 i hope you're following so this will give me one so 1.75 divided by 1.31 and that's sorry 1.75 divided by 1.31 that's 1.3358 so what you are going to do is you multiply these values by integers. So for example now, 1.33, so you can multiply it by 2. If you multiply it by 2, it will give you like 2.6, which might not be okay. You can multiply it by 3. So if you multiply it by 3, that gave us 4. So meaning that this is going to be 3 times 1, that's 3. 3 times this, that is going to be 4. So meaning that the empirical formula of this compound is going to be MN3O4. So you continue to multiply with integers until you get a perfect ratio. So that is what you do in this case when you have a question like this. So what I added to rule number three now as number four is that whenever you are given a percentage and it is not up to 100, what do you do? Subtract it from 100 to get it must have been for oxygen or probably for another element that will give you. Then you do your rule one, divide, you have your percentage by mass, then you divide by atomic mass, then divide by the smallest ratio. So number five rule now is that if the value, the answer you got at the end of the day is not exact ratio, just like this now, 1.33 and 1. So what do you do? Multiply through by integers. I multiply through by two, it still gave me 2.66 something which is still not what I want. Then when I multiply this number by 3, it gave me 4. That's an absolute number. That's a whole number. So that means 3 times 1, 3, 3 times 4, 3 times this number, 4. And that's why I have this as the empirical formula. Do you understand that? That's the next thing. That's where you might be tested again. So solve question 2 as well on this and leave your answer in the comment section. So now... The next thing is number three. So what I've been showing you since morning is how to calculate empirical formula. Now we want to see how to calculate molecular formula. It is simple. 
So at the end of this, please just pick your past question and start solving. If there's anyone you cannot solve, let me know. I'm sure if you follow this through the way I've explained, you will be able to solve virtually all the questions. So let's look at this question. You have to calculate the molecular formula. This is all you just have to do. After you have gotten the empirical formula, then into N, N is the total number now, will be equal to molar mass. So to calculate the empirical formula, you will be given molar mass and you will know the empirical formula. So this N will give you the total number. Let's see how we do that. Now, this question says, I calculate the molecular formula of an organic compound. And I think we did that in the first question. Okay, that's not the one we did. So, that's your assignment. You must have done that. So, let me tell you what the answer should be. Your answer should be CH. So, in that first question, if you got CH, that means, bravo, you got the explanation right. If you got CH. Now, let's look at this now. You have, I assume you have calculated the empirical formula. So let's get the molecular formula. You can see that you have been given the relative molecular mass, which is 78. Don't forget, I told you that relative molecular masses do not have units. So now, from what we have here, the empirical formula here is going to be E and CH. That's what you have. Then it's when equals the relative molecular mass given is 78. So now, what is the atomic mass of carbon? That is 12 plus that of hydrogen 1 into N, and that would be 78. So that would be 13N is equal to 78. N is going to be 78 divided by 13, and that should give you 6. 78 divided by 13, that's 6. So now my N is equal to 6. So if my formula is CHN, then my molecular formula my molecular formula is going to be CH now. That, you know my N is 6, so that will be CH into 6. So 6 multiplied by this, that will give me C6H6. And from where we started, this is the molecular formula for benzene. But what did you get as the empirical formula? CH. But the molecular formula is what? C6H6. So molecular formula shows the actual ratio. Why empirical formula shows the simplest ratio, and that's how to solve it. Solve question two is just an example based on what I just finished doing now. Solve for the empirical formula, then use the relative molecular mass to calculate the molecular formula, and that is it for this class. So, please, if you are on this channel for the first time, this is Primer's classroom where we teach science subjects. And we might bring in art subjects as well. But if you have any topic, either in government, literature, physics, chemistry, biology, where you have issues, please leave it in the comment section. Let us know. Then we're going to teach this topic. So many people demanded for stoichiometry, and that's why we're on stoichiometry. So in the next class, I'm going to start reaction stoichiometry. And that is where most people used to have problems. So if you're here to subscribe, please, now beg with the beg you, subscribe, promote us so that we're here for you. Let's do it all together. You can get all of these things from the comfort of your own. And I'm trying to even do this every two, two days so that you can quickly get everything in case you are writing UTME, SSC, anything so that I can get it. I will teach you physics, chemistry, biology. Yes. So you can get everything. When I'm done with this chemistry, I'll move to biology. So please subscribe and let's get everything right. I'll see you in the next class or in the next episode. God bless you.